Good morning, everybody. Today, you're getting just my hands talking instead of looking at my face while I talk because I figured this would be a better way to show what I want to talk to you about today, which is the difference between combed top and roving. And they all can look the same. They all can come in braids like this, or you can buy them. So they're just these big, long, kind of tube-looking things. All of these things could be roving or could be comb top. And for a long time, they were called, everything was called roving when it came in this sort of long form like this. When everything looked like this, it was all called roving, but some of it was comb top. And that doesn't help us spinners because we need to know what's comb top and what's roving. So sometimes it came upon us to actually look ourselves. So this is comb top. And I know this, you know, partially because it came from the mill and the mill said so. But I know this because I can look at it and see that it's comb top. And how I can see, you can see that everything is aligned really straight. If I were to open it up and take a look at it without jumbling the fibers a lot, you can see, you know, once you see that black back there, you can see that everything is really straight. All the fibers are pretty straight. If I were to pull out a staple length to look at it, I can really see that everything is straight. And by straight, I don't mean that the crimp is gone because you can see that there's crimp in there, but all the fibers are aligned. They're all of a similar length. There's no shortcuts and long cuts, and there's no jumbling of fibers. When we get to the roving, you'll see what I mean by jumbling of fibers. But everything's pretty straight. This is comb top. Now, comb top, when you start dyeing it, it starts to jumble up a little bit. So this is just a piece of comb top I took off of a hand-painted top section, and you can see that even though the fibers have started to jumble up just a little bit more, so a little heat and hot water kind of activate the crimp and the fibers start to move. It's just the way it is. You know, when you wash your hair, your fibers in your hair move and do stuff when you dye them. It does the same thing. So, but it's not that different. I can pull this out and I can still see that all the fibers are pretty aligned, even though that it's a little bit crimpier than it was before it was dyed, it doesn't seem to matter too much, other than, you know, it's a little crimpier and sprunginger, but everything is aligned and it's pretty straight. This is comb top, most definitely comb top. Here I have a bat that I pulled out. And this bat was made with combed top. But we can see that even though it was made with combed top and everything sort of looks kind of aligned here, the way the teeth grab all those fibers, it has jumbled it up. So if I get a little bit of, a little bit of view there, you can see that it is definitely jumbled up. And if I were to take a piece and pull out some, and it's not super easy because it's, you know, there's no simple tip to just pull an end from. You can see this is where I pulled, right here. And I pulled like kind of in the middle of a bunch of different pieces. And I can see, you know, even though I can pull out and try to discern some of the comb top that was in there, the way that it pulls out is jumbled up and a little bit messy which can be good. And I'm not using messy here in a term of negative term. Messy just as in it's just messed up and it's not completely straight like the comb top is. It's just jumbled. So that's a bat that's just starting to get all like super jumbled up. This is a piece of roving and it is a thinner piece of roving depending on the mill that you're using. Sometimes the roving can be really, really thick. I've gotten some in that is just as thick as a comb top. I've gotten some in that is about as thin as one of my, you know, fingers. This one's, you know, a little bit bigger than my thumb. This is 
And it, that the size of it, it just depends on the mill and how the mill is making it. This is stuff that was milled off of my own sheep. And you can see in here, if I were to open this up like this, and you can look, it is a big jumbled up mess. And that's going to give me a lot of air, and a lot of loft, and a lot of bounce. But it also has all the shortcuts, all the long cuts. It's got everything in there. It is lofty and messy and jumbled, and it is most definitely roving. So it's pretty easy to see that this was roving. So, you know, when you were going to buy something, you can see what's the difference between roving and comb top. And pulling off pieces off of this one is just not super helpful because it's just, it's all over the place. So, I just want to do a little side by side here so you can see before we head off for the day. So, you've got comb top. Everything is straight and aligned. And then you've got roving, where everything is jumbled up and kind of crazy. And I'm gonna continue going over these and making short videos explaining how all of this works and the difference. You know, if you're happy making what you make, that's great. But if you're not happy with what you're making or you want to make something different, then uh, sometimes knowing what you're using is going to elevate your spinning. So these will make two very different yarns and we'll continue to talk about that as the weeks continue. So happy spinning today, guys.